This AP Physics um, 1 FRQ question is from 1989. Uh, it used to be AP Physics B, now these topics are covered in AP Physics 1. And in this problem, they say an object of mass m on a string is whirled with increasing speed in a horizontal circle as shown above. When the string breaks, the object has speed v sub 0 and the circular path has radius of r and is in height h above the ground. Neglect air friction. And then they ask you, determine the following, uh, expressing all answers in terms of h, v sub zero, and g. So the first one is the time required for the object to hit the ground after the string breaks. I want to write the information that is given. So the mass of an object is given the radius of rotation is given and also the height is given and I know the acceleration. So if I know acceleration and the distance it will travel, uh, we can use the DA formula. The DA formula, my students call it the DA formula and I'm going to derive it for you. So if you have the distance, which is average velocity, that's initial velocity, plus the final velocity, divide by 2 times the time. And if you have acceleration, which is the change of the velocity, the final velocity minus initial velocity over the time, you can express the time as the change of the velocity over the acceleration and plug it in instead of the time in the previous equation. So you will have the distance is equal to initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2. And instead of the time, we have the change of the velocity, which is the final minus the initial. So we will have the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the acceleration, and acceleration in our case is g. If we multiply both sides by 2g, we will have the 2 times acceleration in the distance equals 2, and when you have v sub 0 plus v final, and v sub 0, um, one is the difference and the other one is addition, it's the same as multiplying two binomials as a minus b and a plus b, you're going to get a squared minus b squared. In our case, we will have v final squared minus v initial squared. And this formula, we usually still follow final velocity. So we say final velocity is equal to the square root of g is the acceleration. So you have 2ad plus the initial velocity squared. And we call this formula the DA formula. So every time you have the distance and acceleration given, you can use the DA formula to find final velocity. And if you want to find the time, you can use the formula for the change of the velocity over acceleration, or you can use the distance formula to find the time. I usually use acceleration if I have it. So I will have change of the velocity over the acceleration, uh, g or in uh, any acceleration, and you can find the time. For our question, they ask you to determine the time required for the object to hit the ground. I can calculate the final velocity using that, that formula. So the final velocity is going to be the square root of 2 acceleration times the distance minus initial vertical velocity. The object has a horizontal uh, velocity, like circular velocity moment or tangential velocity to the circular path. But when it let go, so let's call this initial velocity, but we will let it go, vertical velocity is equal to zero. There is no vertical velocity. It had horizontal velocity. It didn't have the vertical velocity. So the vertical velocity in this case is zero squared. So the, the DA formula that we derived was the square root of 2 AD plus the initial velocity squared. When they tell you initial velocity in this case, they mean horizontal velocity, but the vertical velocity is zero. So in our case, vertical velocity is zero because when it starts hitting the ground and it hits the ground with final velocity, 
we're talking about vertical final velocity. If it had some horizontal velocity, let's say it was moving in this direction when it was let go. So if this is horizontal velocity, then by the time it hits the ground, it still has the same horizontal velocity if there is no air resistance. So horizontal velocity is not going to change. It's the vertical velocity that is changing. And the initial vertical velocity is zero. So that's why we're going to plug in zero into this equation. And that will give you the expression for final velocity. If you want to find the time, again, going back to the formula that I mentioned earlier, the time is equal to change of the velocity over the acceleration. And in our case, acceleration is g. So if I want to find the time, it's going to be change of the vertical velocity over the vertical acceleration. And I have the time is equal to final velocity is the square root of 2gh minus initial vertical velocity, which is 0, and divide by the acceleration, which is g. I don't have to write minus 0 in my equation. And then I will have, I can plug in the whole expression underneath the square root. I will have 2gh over g squared. So I can rewrite the square root of g squared as g. And one of the g's can be cancelled. And the time is going to be, the final expression for the time is going to be t is equal to the square root of 2h over g. For the next question, they ask you the horizontal distance the object travels from the time the string breaks until it hits the ground. So now they're asking you <laughs> to find the distance it will travel. So this distance, how far it will travel by the time it hits the ground. So if it broke at this position, how far it will travel. So this one is um, the horizontal velocity, and they give you that horizontal velocity is v sub 0 times the time, and we just figure out what the time is equal to. So the distance is going to be v sub 0, which is given, and times the time to hit the ground, which is 2h over g. So this will be the distance how far it lands. I have limited space here, so instead of the t, you would plug in the whole expression. So right here, you would plug in all square root over there, so it would be v sub 0 times t uh, for the second part. And then for the third part, they ask you to find the velocity right before it hits the ground. So again, if uh, my object is going to fly like this, and it will land with some vertical velocity, we calculated that velocity is v final. So this expression is for that vertical velocity. And horizontal velocity, this v sub 0 is given. So this velocity is given. Then the actual actual velocity of the object, like I'm going to call this one the actual velocity at which it hits the ground, v, can be found from using Pythagorean theorem. So I will have v sub 0 squared plus v final squared. v sub 0 is given. So that one is coming up at the beginning of the question, uh, the statement of the question. And then if I square the square root of v final, I will get 2gh. So uh, my answer for 3 would be the square root of v sub 0 plus 2gh. For the next question, they ask you, um, using the figure um, that is shown above and the dot that is provided um, here below. Let me see how I'm going to get this. So here, there is a dot. So using this dot, um, Label all the forces acting on the object when it is in the position as shown in the diagram above. So I'm going to show the forces that are acting in the diagram. So here is the object, and the forces that are acting on the object are the tension force, 
and the force of gravity. When I have to show these forces on the dot that is provided, I will have the force of gravity, which is mg, and the tension force. And then for the last question, they ask you to determine the tension in the string just before the string breaks and express your answer in terms of mr, v sub zero, and g. So if I have these forces acting, so I'm gonna redraw it right here so I have more space. So if these are the forces acting, the tension and mg, I can write the components of the tension force, the horizontal component, and the angle theta is given, and the vertical force or component. So this is going to be Ty, and this is going to be Tx. Your Tx is your centripetal force. So the net force, F net, is equal to Ma, and I'm going to do this for vertical and horizontal forces. So for Tx, I have Mac, so that is the centripetal force. And for vertical forces, I have Ty and negative Mg. And there is no acceleration vertically uh, because the object is not moving up and down. It's moving in circular motion only, so there is no acceleration for F net equals to Ma. And then I will have Tx is equal to Mac and Ty is equal to mg. To find T, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I will have T is equal to um, the square root of Ty squared plus Tx squared. And that will give me T is equal to the square root of um, mac squared plus mg squared. I can take m squared out of the parentheses from each, so I will have m squared, and what's left is ac squared plus g squared, and then m can come out, and we have ac squared plus g squared, and that is your tension expression. Because AC is not given, uh, I have to replace AC with V squared over R and the one that is given V sub zero. So that's the velocity at which the object is moving in a circular motion. So the final expression for the tension would be um, M. And then the square root of, for AC squared, I have these two squared that will be v sub zero to the fourth power over r squared plus g squared. And this would be the final expression. And that is all I have for this question from 1989, um, AP Physics 1 type of question. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you in my future videos.